CYSA is a hands-on practical certification, meaning that you actually have to understand not only how to teach touch the keyboard, but how to do some basic commands, how to read logs, how to do a lot of different perspectives of cybersecurity that Security Plus just doesn't require you to do. And so it's definitely a step up from that certification that we often see with something like Security Plus. So what is my first tip? Well, familiar, 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 familiarize yourself with the exam objectives. I'm having a tongue twister today, right? But we want to understand those exam objectives. You should be able to go on CompTIA's website and pull up a list of every exam objective associated with it. And it will tell you things. It'll say, hey, do you know this? These are the types of questions you're going to be asked. And you should know every last one of those. You should be going through those exam objectives. And regardless if you picked up a course that's Udemy, or maybe you picked up a book, or maybe you picked up something else, understand what those objectives are. Now, unlike Security Plus, where you can get away with just the theoretical knowledge, CYSA really isn't that way. You kind of have to understand how to read a log. You have to understand some of the tools on the platform. You really have to understand and be able to dissect the overall implications of the material. Now, Security Plus, it was very much just fundamental knowledge. CYSA, that's practical knowledge. And there is a big difference between theoretical and practical knowledge, as most people realize. Now, it's not so over the top that you shouldn't be able to pick it up within, I'd say, at least a month, even if you've never messed around with it. It's basically, as long as you have a basic understanding of IT fundamentals, uh, for instance, you know how to use DOS command prompt. You understand how, you know, um, an IT system works. You understand IP addressing. You, you understand some basic command line interface on a Linux or on a C prompt inside your, your Windows system uh, or Unix if you're on a Mac, right? Then you'll be okay as long as you can understand those basic uh, uh, functions of the system. But it's important to understand that you need to understand how to read Wireshark, you need to understand how to read Metasploit, you need to understand Splunk, uh, Nessus outputs, all of these outputs are what you're going to be tested on, and so you need to have a basic understanding of said outputs. You might want to set up a virtual lab, right, either through VirtualBox or VMware, and be able to literally go through some of the scenarios and, and kind of fool around with it. Um, this is where this is where it really comes into play of having that practical knowledge. And there's some great companies out there and some great platforms to kind of practice this on, right? If you go through one of the companies I work for, for instance, CyberNow Labs, uh, they have a great program at the end of Security Plus, and they teach you how to do a lot of this stuff. Uh, and as part of that, you're pretty much almost set to do CYSA right afterwards with a little bit more study. If you don't have access to that, or maybe it's too expensive, or maybe something you're not willing to, to jump into, there's always, uh, I believe it's Hack Now, Cyber Hack Now, Hack Labs Now. I can't remember it. I apologize. Uh, but I'll put the I'll put the links in the description, right? Uh, and so those those basic programs that are, that can go on there. I think Cyberbits is another one. There's quite a few of them now. Okay, and you can you can kind of mess around there. But my biggest hint, my biggest hint for that is practice exams. Practice exams. Practice exams. Practice exams. I cannot overstate practice exams. Uh, if you can take enough practice exams, then you should be able to kind of identify what's going on within that CYSA exam, right? Um, some practice exams are better than others. Some are way better than others. But I want to point out, as you're studying for CYSA practice exams, I would redo Security Plus practice exams, especially if it's been a while. Now, if you just got done with Security Plus and you're jumping right into CYSA, you probably don't need to do that. But if it's been a bit since you took Security Plus, it, it is it would behoove you, in my opinion, to retake some practice exam for Security Plus. Because in my opinion, anything that's in Security Plus is fair game in CYSA. Now, you're probably looking at the two exam objectives. You're like, well, you know, they do this and they don't do this. Yeah, but you are expected to have that basic understanding when you're taking CYSA as you're going through it. So that that's my own two cents. Take both types of practice exams. You should be getting consistently... 90% on new exams before you take CYSA. If you do that, taking the practice exams, you should be good to go. Uh, I, myself, I offer free practice in-depth exams on YouTube. I'll place those links, of course, at the end of the video, so you can rewatch those if you want. Uh, and we kind of go over there, right? Uh, I would stay away from brain dumps, okay? I, I see this all the time, especially with students. They're like, oh, I'll just do a brain dump. Brain dumps don't work. They're, they're literally, you're going through and you're expecting the question to be the same as what's on CYSA or on, on Security Plus or whatever exam, and they, they're not. Uh, and if they are, then they're violating that non-disclosure agreement, and there is some unethical principles associated with that. So I would tell you, don't, don't do that. It's not worth your time. Remember, anything that you have in your CYSA certification, 
if somebody's going to interview you, they expect you to know that stuff. And you can't know that if you didn't actually practice and test for the exam properly. So not, not a good route to go through. Very unethical to do it that way. Uh, understand the tools and techniques, right? We talked about this a little bit, but understand SIEM outputs, understand vulnerability scanners. You should be able to do a Nessus vulnerability scanner in your own virtual environment. You should be able to do it against your own systems at home. You should be able to read through it and identify what's going on. Uh, and you should be able to do all that stuff, right? You should be able to practice those log files, a lot of log files. I would tell you, you should be able to read a log file uh, pretty pretty much any log file and be able to understand what it's saying. Log files are a big one in my book. Um, and you should be able to go through it. The biggest, the biggest thing that I see, however, when it comes to these exams, believe it or not, even if for students that really understand it, the ones that really get it, and, and they take practice exams and they do really good on them, is time management. Uh, time management will kill you every single time. It really will. Remember, you've only got so much for an exam, and CYSA is no different. While you have a little bit more time than Security Plus, it's not an unlimited amount of time. And so you have to pace yourself. And those, those, um, those hands on those PBQs, those questions, those are the ones that take a lot of the time. You should not be going over a minute on CYSA per multiple choice question. And so if you're one of those people that really thinks through it and you analyze it, you need to get those time management skills underway, right? You need to be able to go, okay, it's been a minute. I have to answer this. I need to flag it and move on. You cannot sit there in any certification exam and be like, okay, I really don't understand this. So maybe if I read it long enough, it'll suddenly come to me. No, you can't do that. You've got to answer it, flag it, move on. Uh, and that is a valuable test taking technique for any certification. What I highly recommend when you're taking any type of certification exam like CompTIA where you're allowed to go back to answers or to questions that, that maybe you don't know the answer to is skip the PBQs right off the bat, right? Now I know this is contrary to some of the ways some people like to take it. Skip the PBQs at the very, very front of the exam, flag them, skip them, get right to the multiple choice and then start answering those. And the reason I say that is because it is possible, not likely, but possible to pass the exam without doing a single PBQ. Assuming you had every multiple choice question right, or I think it's like 99%, something like that, I think is what CompTIA told me, um, and you still pass it. It is impossible to pass the exam by just doing the PBQs. Now our goal is not to miss the PBQs. That's not our goal. What our goal is, is in your coming into an exam for the first time, you're taking a certification, even I do this now, you get nervous, right? And your mind's all over the place, and you're like, you're trying to rush through, and you're trying to get through it, and then it's just, it puts you in a bad position. By skipping those PBQs, which are very in-depth, they're going to take some time, we get to the multiple choice as soon as we can, it gets us into a rhythm. Because you can expect to see about 70 questions that are multiple choice. And so now we start, we slow down, we start to get breath, now we're invested about for 10 minutes into it, we're really invested in those questions. We're starting to slim down, we're starting to, to calm down a little bit, we're getting into the test-taking measure. We're going to go through those, we're going to flag those questions we don't know the answer to, or that we're guessing on, or even that we're not sure about, and we're going to move through it. And then once we're done with those multiple choice questions, then we do the PBQs. And we should have enough time, if we only spend a minute on each question for CYSA, to devote some time towards those PBQs and answer those properly. And then we can go back to those flagged questions and answer those. And that's really where, where that time management skill comes into play. And, and one of the biggest things that I can highly suggest for that. Um, okay, other tips. Read questions carefully. I always tell students, read the question twice. You're going to read the question. Read the scenario in its entirety, read the answers, then reread what is the question really asking me. Not what I think it's asking me. What is it really asking me? And then answer it. If you don't know the answer, maybe you got four answers and you're like, I am completely clueless. Guess. You have a 25% chance of getting it right. That's statistics. That's just the way it is, right? If you can eliminate one answer, you have a 33% chance of getting it right. If you can eliminate two answers, that's a 50% chance. Uh, and then once you've guessed, unless you have a legitimate reason to change your answer, Legitimate meaning, oh, I forgot something, or I read it in a new question, and I have basic knowledge to, to come through it, and there's something I saw that made me question my decision, leave the answer alone. Do not touch it. Usually your first hunch is the best hunch. We see this time and time again, okay? Um, you want to stay calm and focused. Verify your answers you are going through if you have time at the end of the exam. Most people don't have time at the exam. I never verify my answers because I'm afraid that I'll go through and, and change something, which I know on myself. I know I will. Uh, and so we don't want to do that. All right, so things that we want to do beforehand for preparation. We want to do mind maps, right? We want to do mnemonics, right? Things like, uh, you know, what is it? My favorite one, um, please do not throw sausage pizza away, right? That's an easy one for OSI. But there's other ones for the MITRE ATT&CK framework, for the DIAMOND framework, for OWASP top 10. All of those you need to create mnemonics for. They're out there, you can utilize them, right? Uh, you can use study groups to study with other people. We found that if you study with a group of people, even if it's online, you are, I think it was, I think the study said 25% 25% uh, chance of, of actually 
uh, keeping the knowledge longer. Now, this is active study groups. This isn't, I'm in the same room with somebody and studying. No, we're talking about actively studying with each other, participating in discussions, working through the process. Uh, you're more likely to remember those answers, to remember those instances. Uh, and then practical application. We'll go through it. All right. Um, books. Books. I'm not a big book person. I'm really not. I, I read way too much. I'm not a big book person when it comes to stuff. I do better through hands-on learning. Most people in cyber and IT do. They're more hands-on learning people than anything else. Um, you can go through that process and, and go through it. There's labs. I highly recommend labs. Try Hack Me. Oh my gosh, can't believe I couldn't remember that. Try Hack Me is one of those labs uh, that I recommend next to NCL. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, CNL, CyberNow Labs uh, are both good lab environments if you get a, a, ahead of it. Uh, and then practice exam, practice exam, practice exam. I cannot, I cannot stress this enough. You should be taking probably minimum of a thousand questions for CYSA. Uh, and yes, I do mean that many, right? And you should be consistently getting, getting them right, right? It's not enough to know that you got the answer wrong. If you get one wrong, you need to figure out why you got it wrong, okay? And that's that's the key. And stay away from the free ones sometimes. Um, if you are taking free exams, like I know mine are free, they're on YouTube, of course, they're free, right? Make sure you're you're doing it in background on these people, right? Uh, I found some some practice exams, and you have no idea who wrote them. They don't publish who they wrote. They don't provide their credentials, right? And that's never a good way. Uh, and then I see people using AI a lot, right? They're like, oh, ChatGPT 4.0. I use ChatGPT for a lot of my questions that I do on on YouTube, uh, but I end up having to rewrite like I don't want to say half, but it's it's dang close to half. Why? Because the answers they give you are so leading that you think that you're doing really well when you're not because the right answer is so obvious, right, compared to the other answers, or it's just wrong. It's just straight out wrong. And you need somebody that actually understands it from an in-depth level to go, well, that's not right, and to be able to research it to make sure that it is right. Otherwise, you could be taking a practice exam, you're getting wrong information, and then you're studying and thinking something's right when actually it is 100% wrong. Uh, and I've seen AI do that. I've seen some bad people do that online where they where they provide that. Uh, I know that Total Seminars, Jason Dion, uh, Messer, Messer doesn't do CYSA, right? But Total Seminars does. That's who I teach for on on Udemy. Dion is great. Um, yeah, they they we we do we have backgrounds in this stuff, right? Those are the people I would trust. Uh, and there's a couple others out there. I'm not going to question everybody that's out there. There's some really good ones out there. Uh, I know both Total Seminars because I work for him, right, as a contractor. And I know Jason Dion. He was actually one of my professors when I was doing a master's degree a long, long time ago when I was going for a master's. Uh, I now have more education than he does. He he doesn't have a doctorate, so I get to I get to. But I actually I actually talk to him every once in a while. Great guy, by the way. All right. I hope that answers your questions. Until next time, I'm Dr. K.